Hi, this is going to be the seven segment display and the decoder chip for it for the design project. So this is a seven segment display. It's called that because it has seven different LEDs on there, seven different segments to it that make up the main display. It doesn't count this little dot here that you would use for a decimal number. And it's really just seven different LEDs that are connected all through this same ground pin, which is the center pin. Now there's different kinds. Sometimes the uh, the, the center pin is supposed to be connected to high and the LEDs are facing the other way but in this particular kind you can find out what kind it is by the way by googling the number on the bottom um, this particular kind is hooked up so that the center pin is supposed to be the low of the LEDs so you hook it up this way with the high rails going through there and through the resistor so to, the right kind of resistor to be able to see enough current is around a 470 ohm always a good idea to double check the resistor box. I'm using the same bench that uh, that Pedro was at yesterday, so that has to, I'm not sure if I'm not I'm not saying that Pedro did anything to be responsible for this, but the 470 ohm resistor box was filled with 470k rather than 470 ohm, and uh, and they were swapped there. So it's a good idea to double check the resistance if uh, if you're using a bench after Pedro was using it. Okay, so another thing that you can deal with is having, uh, having multiple connections at once. And you'll notice one thing that happens here is that because both of the LEDs that we're driving are sending current through the same resistor, the current, uh, the, the total amount of current is now being split between these two LEDs. They've got, uh, and because of that, they end up being a little bit dimmer if we hook up more than one. So we're gonna have to have uh, a way around that when we hook things up to the decoder chip to get it to work. So this, uh, this chip here, which looks exactly like the other dip sockets, if you read carefully the number on it, then you can see that it's a 4511E, which is a style of the decoder chip right there. So what this chip is for is for giving it binary coded decimal. So you give it four bits, which are representing a binary number, and then it outputs to the seven segment display. Right, so it outputs to the different LEDs around uh, around the seven segment display. So here we go. Uh, e there, output E is going to be outputting that little bit down there, and output D is that one there. It's going around one, two, three. So we can double check that everything's hooked up in the right order. So the one that's outputting E is number nine, and that should be the bottom left on the display. Yep, and then the output here, which is D, that's number uh, 10, so that'll be on the display output uh, D, which is at the bottom, so let's check that that's next, yep. So you can continue on in order and check that everything lines up correctly to the, the bits on the seven segment display. So then what you do is you hook up the decoder chip and you bridge over to the seven segment display using, uh, using resistors. So the reason you do that is that each output is going to be current limited separately. So we'll have a different resistor applying for every single bit on the seven segment display to make the, um, the lights all stay the same brightness no matter which, um, no matter how many of the different lights are on, no matter which number we're trying to display. So I'll just wire that up and, um, and we'll, we'll have a look at how that works. So we've got the decoder chip and the uh, and, and all of the outputs hooked up for it now. So the decoder chip has a number of different outputs that go to the seven segment display LEDs and you have to make sure that each of those is limited by a resistor. So here I've chosen to do the strategy where you just jump the resistors directly across. This strategy you do have to be really careful that you don't have the resistors touching each other so, uh, so Raimi ran into some trouble with this the other day. You have to be careful not to have the outputs connected together because these are situations where the, uh, the, the resistor wires are connected right to these outputs and it's easy for you to jump these across. So if you're not careful, you'll have them contacting each other. And that means that maybe you'll have one pin which is trying to be out, outputting a low and another pin that's trying to be outputting a high. So that's gonna drive a lot of current through your uh, through your chip and overheat it and make it make it break and it's really tough to debug that once that's happened so to be safe for sure what you should do is not hook up these resistors when 
you have power connected to your chip, so make sure that you depower the chip when you're plugging in these resistors, and then double check that they're all not connected together before you plug in the power. Or, even better, would be to take the time to put tape or some kind of an insulating uh, thing, so ideally like masking tape or electrical tape or something, around the, the uh, exposed metal parts of these resistors when they're going to be close together, so that's going to stop them from contacting. Anyway, we've got everything hooked up on the chip, except for the input BCD pins, which are 1, 2, 6, and 7. Everything else is hooked up, and we have, uh, so this is, there's three special inputs here, uh, not LT, not BL, and not LE. So these, uh, these stand for kind of uh, light enable, blank, and light test. So light test, if this is a low, so don't light test is a low, meaning that you will light test, and this just turns on an 8, so it's for uh, testing that all of the lights on the output are hooked up at all. It doesn't really test that they're hooked up in the right order, but it does test that they all work. Then uh, if don't blank is low, then you're going to be blanking, and that'll blank the display. That's something that we can use later with the, uh, with the clock pulse in the design project to make the bits flash in between. Uh, in between numbers, so if you have like a repeated zero, then that's a good way to make that uh, distinguish between one zero and the next. And then the last one is don't light enable. So that needs to be low for the, uh, the array to be showing up the right numbers. Okay, so for now we've got light test uh, set to high, so don't light test set to low with this wire here that a little bit confusingly is red. And we are going to plug this in and we expect all of the lights to turn on. So let's check. Okay, yeah, so every light on the LED has turned on, and because they're all going through different resistors, it doesn't matter if we have one, uh, it doesn't matter if we have one light on or another, or, or three or five lights on, it's going to be about equally bright. Okay, what resistor you should use depends on the voltage that you've got. So right now, I've got a voltage of, uh, of four volts, and this might be a little bit, uh, a little bit low for using the 470, so depending on what voltage you uh, you know that you're going to use, you'd use a different kind of resistance there. So there at 5 volts, it looks pretty good. All right. So now we've got a uh, light, don't light test set to high so that we are going to not be light testing. And we've hooked up the BCD inputs, which are the other pins. So 1, 2, uh, 6, and 7. And they're not exactly in the order that you think. But anyway, let's just look at the number that we've got. So they're all put to low right now, which means we're outputting a zero. If we put the 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 seventh one, this last one here, to a high, then we're going to change that to a one. So there's the number one. And if we put this next one to a high, it's actually going to change to the number nine. And that's because this is the most significant bit. This one over here is the least significant bit. And the other two go from like second least to uh, third least. So one, if we change this one over, then we should go to a three. Yep. And now if we change this one over as well, we should add four to that and go to a seven. Great. Okay, so you should verify that the, after you hook it up, you should verify that the decoder chip works correctly. And that is how you hook up the decoder chip for a seven segment display. Okay, so now we've got a flip-flop hooked up here, a JK flip-flop, and we've got another one wired and ready to go. We're only actually using the first one right now. So we've got the uh, bit number, the, the, the third and the fourth bit, so the most significant and the second most significant bit, both, both wired to a zero all the time, and the other two are taking their inputs off of a flip-flop. Then we got the flip-flop, uh, one of them in toggle mode permanently, and the other one set to, uh, to toggle only if the first one is always a high, which is how you make a two-bit counter. So this is, uh, this is just counting up from zero to three and then repeating back down to zero. Great, so that's one way to verify that your flip-flop is working and that your timing diagram is, uh, so your uh, decoder chip is working well for all the numbers in the chip. Okay, so when you're going to go wire up your design project, what you want to do is come to some state where you've laid out all of the chips. So for us, we've got our decoder chip. We've got three flip-flop chips, which will allow us to use the five flip-flops that we need. So uh, we've got them wired up there. We've got our three gate chips. So specifically, this is the uh, the NOR gate chip, the OR gate chip, and the NAND gate chip. So everything's wired up. We have the uh, grounds and the highs hooked up for the various chips. And we can actually see that we missed one of the highs. So uh, this is a, a great moment 
when you're building the circuit for you to pause and make sure that you've got everything hooked up appropriately to catch a mistake like that. So um, definitely the most important wires to have as these little jumper wires are the, uh, the grounds and the highs and then second to that would be sort of the clocks and then you would go through after that and wire anything that's a permanent low to a low, anything permanent high to a high. So now everything's wired up by starting with the, uh, the regular wires to uh, show all the obvious grounds and high. We made it easier to debug. It turns out that there was a really subtle bug to find, which is that this diagram had the, uh, had the incorrect gate order. So the, for the particular chip that we have, for the particular 74HC32 uh, series, this is actually the output here. And, uh, and this is the output down there. So we needed to reverse those wires before it would actually work. Okay, so now it's actually cycling through 0, 02, 6, 6, 1, 6, 4, 0, 2, 6, 6, 1, 6, 4. And when you finally get it working, boy, is this ever satisfying. Thank you very much for, uh, for uh, watching along, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this.